Google Search, a staple of our internet experience. Now, using Google is incredibly easy, but to make full use of what features Google can offer, as well as to, you know, sort of tweak its behavior to your liking, well, that's not quite as easy. Today, we're going to be taking a look at 10 tips that will perhaps make this a little better for you. You're watching another Random Wednesday episode on 0612 TV. Hello and welcome back to another Random Wednesday episode. Now, before we begin, disclaimer, if you are technically inclined, which I know quite a lot of you are, maybe you already know some of the tips that I'm about to share. So yeah, perhaps you may not be getting a whole lot out of this video. I can only hope that we will cover something that you've never heard of. But I can assure you that, you know, the things that we're going to see today are important, they are going to be useful, or at the very least, extremely cool to play with. So without any further ado, let us begin with tip number one. First and most importantly of all, use quotes around search terms. Now, this is so important that if you're only going to take away one thing from this video, let it be this. You see, when you actually perform a search normally using multiple words, those words can appear in any order. This may actually give you results that are not what you expect. So, well, you put quotes around a phrase that should appear together. Google will then only give you results in which these words appear together. Of course, you can have multiple of such terms within your search query, just have, you know, multiple sets of quoted up words. This is also useful if you find that Google is actually dropping certain search terms. This can happen when Google thinks they are not important, but they are important to you. So go ahead and put quotes around those words and they will not be ignored. In the past, you could actually use the plus sign to do the same thing, but from what I've read, that's not the case anymore. Ever since Google had Google+, Plus, they now use that character for their own purposes. <sighs> Tip number two, the negative sign. Now, sometimes when you perform a search, you may find that there are a lot of results that aren't actually relevant to you, and they all have something in common. What you can do is you can simply add that term into your search bar, but put a negative sign behind it. This tells Google to ignore the word, and so they will not appear in your search results. <sighs> Tip number three, site. Now, if you ever want to search for things within a particular site, well, you can do that. Type in the word site, insert a colon, and then type out the domain of the site. Make sure you don't leave a space after the colon, the two things must be stuck together. The rest of your search will be confined to that particular site. <sighs> Tip number four, definition. Now, if you ever wanted to, you know, do a dictionary lookup for a particular word, Put in the word definition, stick a colon after it, and then type in the word you want to look up. This tells Google to actually look towards dictionary sites, and more often than not, what's gonna happen is a definition is and more often than not, what's gonna happen is Google is just going to find something that looks okay and present it directly to you. That way you don't even have to click through to any site. So what we've just seen are some of the basic features, some things you can do within the search box itself. Let's now actually step a little bit beyond the basic Google search and look at some other features that Google has to offer. Tip number five. From time to time, you may need some kind of a stopwatch or some kind of a timer. You know, maybe you are rehearsing for a presentation, maybe you're making eggs. I don't know. The point is, Google lets you do that right on the Google search page itself. If you search for stopwatch, well, Google presents you with a working stopwatch. If you search for timer, well, you get a timer that you can set. The alternative to setting the timer directly via the interface is by actually just searching the time you want. So say if I search for two hour timer, then it will be set accordingly and it will start immediately. <sighs> Tip number six, reverse image search. Now, you know what image search is? You give Google, you know, a query and it'll give you images relevant to that query. Reverse image search is much more interesting. You actually give Google a picture and it will find you relevant pictures. To perform reverse image search, simply drag and drop an image either from your browser or from, you know, some file explorer on your computer onto the text field of Google image search. 
The image is uploaded to Google and they will perform a search using the image you've supplied. This could be useful for a plethora of reasons. You could be tracing the source of an image. Maybe you have a very small image and you're trying to find a larger version. Simply tell Google you're looking for all sizes of a particular image and Google will actually present you all the copies it's ever found in descending order of size. <sighs> Tip number seven, unit and currency conversion. As it turns out, Google is also great at very quickly converting from one unit to another. All you have to do is to simply put in your quantity, give it the original unit, and then simply say two and a new unit. And that's not the only thing Google converts. Google can also convert currency types. For example, I can put a value in USD to convert to JPY, which is Japanese yen. If you don't know the abbreviation for the type of currency, no problem. Just replace it with the country's name and then write the word currency at the end. All these conversions are presented to you in a widget that can be modified. What this means is if you want to perform subsequent conversions, just type them in a widget and get an immediate response. <sighs> Tip number eight, you can also use Google as a calculator. In fact, you can put in any expression. You can even use it as a scientific calculator. You know, functions like logs work, functions like trigonometry works. So yeah, it's actually a pretty powerful calculator. And why stop there? You can even combine arithmetic with some of the conversion functions. So if you want to do some calculation in one unit and convert it to another, just stick the two things together and it'll work as you expect. <sighs> Tip number nine, plot graphs. Now, not only can Google do math for you, it can even draw out your graphs in both 2D and 3D. All you have to do is to put in a valid expression in terms of X and Y to get a 2D graph or in terms of X, Y, and Z for a 3D graph. You can then interact with the graph using your mouse. You know, you can either turn it around if it's 3D or pan it around if it's 2D. The 2D version also tells you, you know, all the X and Y values. So if you're looking for roots, this is an easy way to do it. <sighs> Finally, tip number 10, and this is a Google Maps tip. Anytime you want to find your way from one place to another, simply type from place name to place name. That will actually bring up Google Maps and will help you find your way there. Some of the advanced things you can do in this context is you can actually search for postal codes instead of, you know, addresses or street names. Sometimes addresses are just too long and unwieldy to type, or sometimes maybe an address isn't very clear. You know, maybe you don't know all of it or if, you know, there's some ambiguity. Using a postal code helps. And as an added bonus, you can actually try using from home or to home. Depending on what settings Google actually has, it may actually be able to figure out where you live, which is kind of creepy in retrospect. But that of course saves you a little bit of time telling Google where your home actually is. And there you go, that's it for this episode. I hope you've learned something today, especially for you tech savvy people, hopefully something in this video was useful to you. But yeah, that's it. That's all there is for this episode. Thank you very much for watching. And until next time, you're watching 0612 TV. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, consider checking out the rest of my work on my channel. Alternatively, you may be interested in a playlist of my earlier work on computing and computer science topics. If you'd like to show me some monetary support, I am on Patreon. You can find a link to my campaign in the video description. Of course, you can simply like this video or leave a comment. I'll be sure to respond as soon as I can. To keep in touch with my future uploads, do subscribe to this channel. And for even more updates, check out the official Twitter account for this channel at 0612TV. Thank you for your support.